Hello, my name is Ryan Page, and I'm an application specialist for Techless Structures. Today in this video, we're going to be discussing working with PDF references. For this video specifically, we will be covering the following key points. How to insert a PDF reference that contains a plan view, so that it is orientated horizontally in our model. Also, we'll cover how to insert a PDF reference that has an elevation view, so that it is orientated vertically in our model. And lastly, we'll cover a couple of tips and tricks for working with PDF references. So with that, let's begin. Inserting a PDF is relatively straightforward, but before we begin, there are a few things we need to ensure. First, our PDF needs to be a vector PDF, or in other words, created with vector-based software such as a CAD system. Raster or scanned images will not work when inserting in Tecla. Next, we need to have select reference models turned on from the selection toolbar down below. If it's not, go ahead and just click the icon to turn it on. Then afterwards, ensure you click the arrow icon to the left of that toolbar so that you can still interact with other objects. Thirdly, we must ensure that we have selecting components as our selection type. This is represented by the green icon with a gray triangle and circle inside of it. If this isn't active, activate it now. Now that we are set, we can import our PDF and scale it up. Go to File, Import, Insert PDF. Simply browse to the location where you have your PDF and select it and hit OK. We'll skip over supplying a scale and use the tool from the Applications and Components in just a few moments to scale our PDF. But we do need to supply the correct page number we wish to insert. Now, if your PDF is a single document, you can leave this at 1, but for our demonstration, we're going to insert Sheet 2 for our plan view. Now we click OK and pick our insertion point. This could be anywhere in our model, but the best practice is to use the model origin or the lower left corner of your grid system that correlates to your PDF. Once we click, the PDF is inserted at its true sheet size. From here, we can go about scaling it. If we go to the Applications and Components side pane on the right hand side, we can search for Reference, and up will come Reference Model Scale. Simply double click on this icon. Once the crosshairs are active, select your PDF. Next, we will choose two points to define a distance. It's a best practice to use a known distance or dimension, such as this 40-foot dimension string on our plan view. Using existing line works helps make sure you are staying perpendicular and providing a straight vector when choosing your points. Once we have defined the distance by clicking the points, the main window dialog will pop up. Simply provide the actual distance between the two points you pick, in our case, 40 feet and then hit the Enter key. Once we do, the reference model is scaled. Now, all we need to do is align it to our grid by selecting it, right-clicking, and choosing Move. Then, pick your base point and destination to align. Now, we have placed a PDF reference in our model horizontally to represent a plan view. Often there is a need to insert a PDF reference that represents an elevated view. This is especially true when doing tilt-up work or masonry. The process for inserting the PDF is exactly the same as we've covered in the previous section, except for one key difference. We need to set the work plane to be vertical before inserting. On a basic level, work planes are a local coordinate system and can be defined independently from your model or view XYZ. The Insert PDF tool only places a reference model on the XY plane, or what is traditionally known as a plan view. We will use work planes to temporarily change the XY plane to be parallel to our vertical grid lines. This enables us to insert the PDF for elevation views. You should have your grid system in place and populated with the correct spacing in the X, Y, and Z axis before beginning. We will also need to have elevation views of our model. If you have not created them already, you can quickly create them by selecting your grid, then right-clicking and choosing Create View along grid lines. In the dialog, with your grid selected, hit the Create button, and Tecla will create a plan and elevation use along your grid lines, and we will use some of these to insert our PDFs. So let's go ahead and do our front view as an example. First, we need to select the view from the view list, and we're going to select the view that we want to insert an elevation on. In our demonstration, this will be elevation on grid 1 for our front view. Now, we need to make sure that the view is not rotated. If it is for you, go ahead and simply hit Control-P to snap to the plane. 
Next, let's go to the View ribbon above and select the Work Plane dropdown and then Parallel to View Plane. Once we do, click in the elevated view and the work plane is now set. Notice the change in the X, Y, and Z graphic down at the bottom right of our view. From here, we can insert our PDF and scale it up as normal. We can repeat these steps and set the work plane to be parallel to each elevated view we need to insert an elevation PDF at. We can repeat these steps and set the work plane to be parallel to each view that you want to insert a vertical PDF. Once you're done inserting your vertical PDFs, ensure to open up your plan view or 3D view and snap to plane so it's not rotated, and set the work plane parallel to the view one last time. This will ensure that your work planes are set correctly back to the normal XYZ configuration. You may now use your PDF references in the elevation views as needed. There are a few useful tips when working with PDFs that users may find interesting. First, you can manage them into different groups in the reference model side pane on the right hand side. And additionally, you can turn on and off the visibility of groups or individual references by clicking the corresponding eye icon. This helps keep things clean and out of your way. You can also edit the name of references after they've been inserted. You can just simply double click on the reference model listed in the side pane and you will see its properties open up. Here, you can adjust a few things, including the name. This is incredibly handy if you have multiple elevations on a single sheet. You'll end up having the same page inserted in your model several times at different orientations. This allows you to give them unique names and to manage them far more quickly and effectively. Just make sure to hit the Modify button down below to apply your changes before exiting out of this pane. Additionally, in the settings of a reference model, you can also control the layers that make up the line work and annotation. Layers are a feature of vector PDFs. However, not all PDFs are created equally. The layers listed will depend on the software, the drivers, as well as the person who created it. So what is listed in the layers is going to vary from PDF to PDF. Regardless though, you can turn these on and off independently. This becomes very useful when PDFs that contain masking or blocks behind their text, making it difficult or hard to read. However, if you can't turn on and off the layer for masking or hatching, there is an alternative approach. You can change the reference model rendering to shaded wireframe. You can do so by going to the view ribbon, rendering, and then selecting components shaded wireframe, or you can simply hold down shift and hit the two key on your keyboard. This concludes our video on working with PDF references. Thank you for watching. For more information on the topics discussed or for other topics, make sure to visit our Tecla User Assistance webpage for product guides, support articles, tutorials, and more.